Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon, and we're going to talk about the continued consolidation of Hollywood. It's coming out that Legendary Entertainment is exploring a possible sale slash merger. This doesn't come as a surprise. They haven't been doing very well. Their last couple of movies didn't do terribly well uh, compared to the budgets. And of course, you know, Warner Media has been just throwing their movies onto HBO Max on the streaming. So they're not even recouping a lot of their cost at the, the box office. Uh, this is despite, you know, Godzilla vs. Kong doing better than, than they thought it was going to do, but it's, it's just not enough. Everybody's looking to cash out. And uh, it's going to be really interesting because Legendary owns Nerdist and Geek and & Sundry. And I actually, I personally can trace back a lot of the problems we're having in Hollywood right now with geek culture and pop culture going Hollywood and getting quote unquote woke, you can trace it back to Nerdist and Geek and Sundry, in my opinion. Uh, and they're they're gonna probably get gone. If I had to guess, I think they're they're probably gonna get gone as part of this acquisition. They've been laying people off like crazy. We know uh, Chris Hardwick was kind of ousted uh, a couple of years ago, um, or he, they've been downplaying his role in Nerdist. So it's the it feels like the pendulum is swinging that real fans, real nerds are going back to independent sources, independent blogs, independent YouTubers, independent podcasts. They're getting their news and their reviews from other sources because Hollywood has, has sort of, uh, you know, taken over the, the nerd space. They want to control the, the comic shop culture and it's not working very well for them. In my opinion, we're going to talk about it. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We're over 211,000 subs. Is that right? Man, we've jumped up the last couple of days. It's almost like almost like something big happened. Some big story broke, and people are coming to the channel. Definitely appreciate it, guys. Uh, your support means a lot. We are supported directly by our viewers. You know, even if we get, you know, occasional sponsorships or stuff like that, it's because of you guys that we're allowed to do that, that we're allowed to make comics, that we're allowed to, you know, do, do the projects and pursue the projects we, we want to pursue. And, you know, I don't ever want to forget that. I think Hollywood has forgotten that, that the reason, you know, these properties exist, the reason that they're successful, the reason that they can sell merchandise is because of fans and when they give the finger to fans, they take their money and they go someplace else. You know, I mean, it's, it's not hard to figure out. If you're insulted, you go to a restaurant and you're insulted repeatedly by the waiter and he spits in your food, you're not going to go back. And that's what we're seeing a lot of in, in Hollywood these days. And I'm going to talk about that in regards to Nerdist and, and Geek and & Sundry and, and those kinds of media outlets that are all imploding, by the way. They're running out of money because they were basically just studio mouthpieces. I mean, they were more shill than a lot of these websites because they're directly owned uh, by the studios. So before we get into it any further, guys, just want to you know point out that Bubbly Steve is up for pre-order on shopclownfish.com. Uh, this is a plushie we've been talking about. He's pretty cute. Uh, it's pretty high quality too. He's actually manufactured by the same company that does a lot of the anime plushies. So he should be he should be a, a pretty pretty decent companion for a number of years. Uh, he's 15 inches, 15 inches of Steve. Go to shopclownfish.com. You got about a month to pre-order them. Uh, definitely appreciated. Even if you guys just watch, you don't have to buy anything. Just just watch. It's appreciated. All right. So Screen Rant has got an article on this. We've got, uh, let's see, Variety's got an article on this because they're talking about Dune coming from Legendary. And I'm I'm on the fence about Dune. I feel like Dune is going to be Dune for normies. Like, it feels like they're going to give this version of Dune the uh, Lord of the Rings treatment. It might not be a bad movie. In fact, I liked uh, the director's, I liked uh, uh, Blade Runner 2049. I actually thought it was pretty okay. I was surprised. I didn't expect to like it. I'm like, God, you can't make a sequel to Blade Runner. You just can't. And I'm like, oh, hey, it, it didn't suck. It didn't completely suck. It was okay. That being said, this Dune looks a lot more pedestrian than I expected it to. It doesn't look, 
you know, I mean, after seeing the David Lynch version, after seeing the Geiger designs, you know, it's kind of like you look at this dune, you're like, man, this dune is actually kind of boring compared to, you know, other versions of Dune that we've seen, even concept art and stuff like that. But I mean, we'll see. It might be, it might be okay. I don't know. Anyway, Legendary's got bigger problems. They might be getting sold. Uh, so Godzilla versus Kong Studio, Legendary Entertainment, exploring possible sale and merger. The film production and media company, Legendary Entertainment, is considering the idea of potentially selling or merging with another company. Uh, several other media companies have explored this option some of which are in the process of being finalized. A24, Imagine Entertainment, and Reese Witherspoon's company, Hello Sunshine, have all been considering other options as well. MGM has been sold for $8.45 billion to Amazon, which they, they tried to stop. Um, Senator Warren tried to stop this. It, you know, She said that it was a monopoly. I'm like, why are you so worried about MGM going to Amazon when you guys apparently were asleep at the wheel for Fox going to Disney. That was a much, much bigger deal. MGM at this point in time is a nothing burger. They really are. They're, they've been whittled down to practically nothing. So Fox and Disney was a much, much bigger deal, but you guys are going to worry about, you guys are going to worry about uh, MGM. But I mean, all the way around, I, I don't think this is a good idea for all these studios to consolidate because we're going to have, you know, just a couple of entities producing all of our entertainment, all of our social media, you know, all of our streaming options, uh, all of, all of the input is going to come from just a handful of probably tech companies. When it's all said and done, we're just gonna have a handful of tech, uh, companies that are going to produce all the entertainment. Uh, they're going to control the communications. They're going to sell us products. I mean, it's kind of, kind of dystopian a little bit. I don't know. Uh, we need more independent voices for sure. So while Warner Media and Discovery are hoping to receive government approval to merge, uh, back in 2020, Funimation sought to purchase the anime platform Crunchyroll for $1.175 billion, which was delayed in March. I think it's going to go through because we've had other options pop up. Every other streaming service has anime on it, so they can argue effectively. Now, they were looking at this as being a monopoly uh, you know, for anime content, but like every other platform has anime on it now. Tubi's got anime on it. Amazon has anime. They, they just... Uh, landed the uh, Evangelion, the fourth movie. So there really isn't much of a, a case. Now, Crunchyroll, that was another thing that people told us we were lying about. They said, you're lying about Crunchyroll. Crunchyroll's not going to get gone. I'm like, oh, my sweet summer child. Uh, we've been hearing this for like a year now that uh, Crunchyroll and Rooster Teeth were kind of liabilities to Warner and they were probably going to get gone one way or the other. Either they were going to shut them down, merge them, or in this case, sell them. Uh, I was surprised that they would sell them for that much. I didn't think they were worth that much, but you know, oh well, oh well. Film production and media company Legendary Entertainment was originally founded by Thomas Toll in 2000. They've worked with Warner Brothers, Universal, and Netflix on some of the biggest films of the respective year. Their first release was Batman Begins in 2005. Their most recent film was Godzilla vs. Kong, while their next release is Dune. They were considered to be independently run until 2016 when they became a subsidiary of Chinese company Wanda Group. And you know what? China's making their own movies. They don't need Legendary anymore. They're making their own movies and they're making more money over there than our movies are making. They don't need Legendary. Variety exclusively reported that Legendary Entertainment is considering a sale or merger. There were talks back in April regarding some possible deals. The conversation has become more serious within the last several weeks both with and without a special purpose acquisition company, SPAC. Everybody's going to these SPACs. They are. They're like, oh, this is the way out, guys. We're not making money, but we'll go get some more venture capital. That'll, that'll work. The publication projects that any deal that Legendary Entertainment is considering would go for less than the $3.5 billion Wanda paid for the company in 2016. No shit. They haven't had any major, major releases that have made like, you know, tons and tons of money. Uh, with a, a wide array of big Hollywood blockbusters in their pocket, Legendary has proven to be rather successful, both before and after the sale to Wander Group. Uh, some of their upcoming titles include uh, Mimi Caves Fresh, starring Sebastian Stan, The New Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Does anybody want that? And a reboot of The Toxic Avenger. Uh, some of their films currently in development include Bad Blood, Gundam, 
and the Pokemon Detective Pikachu sequel. I did like Detective Pikachu quite a bit. We loved Detective Pikachu. I think it was probably at that point in time uh, the best video game movie made. I thought it was actually pretty good. If they do end up selling or merging the company has already proven its success is, um, yeah, but they don't own any of this stuff. I don't know. Uh, there's been a lot of industry buzz around the selling and merging of companies, some of which has resulted in the government needing to step in. This needing, well, have, having been stepping in. Uh, this is why some have been worry, wary about uh, uh, Funimation purchasing Crunchyroll as it would just be another step toward a monopoly on Western distributed anime content. No, the Japanese will find a way around. For sure. They're already working on it. I, I think they're getting tired of the middlemen uh, running interference between them and the fans. And I think they're going to work on some options. So there we go. Legendary probably going to get sold. Now, let's go back to Nerdist and Geek and Sundry. And again, I, hey, if I had to lay blame at the feet of one media outlet in particular that is responsible for the current situation with Hollywood controlling the pop culture media, even controlling nerddom, controlling comic shop culture and influencing comic shop culture the way that it has in the last couple of years, I, I would place it at the feet of Nerdist, which was started in Hollywood, started at a Hollywood comic shop. Um, people, you know, people who went there, they were from Hollywood. They were part of that Hollywood nerd circle. And these are the same people that, you know, were on Geek and Sundry. These are the same people that went to Critical Role. Uh, you know, and it's all connected. You trace all of it back. You trace all of the problems that that we've had in the pop culture space and the pop culture media and uh, Twitter and the blue checks and all of this jazz that we talk about on the channel. And it's basically Hollywood politics and Hollywood culture creeping into the nerd space worldwide. Like it's basically Hollywood nerds are setting the tone for the entire world. And if you don't agree with the Hollywood nerds who are always going to be way more out there, I think than a lot of other folks, you know, in the Midwest or down South or whatever, then you're homophobe, racist, sexist, misogynist, bigot. Uh, yeah. So that's where I think things really came off the rails personally. Um, and again, Nerdist started by a guy who was married to an heiress, lives in a freaking mansion or was married to an heiress. I don't know what the deal is now, but yeah, it wasn't like, you know, they were some scrappy, you know, pull yourself up by your bootstraps operation. Like if they started in a, a well-known downtown Hollywood comic shop, they got celebrity guests, uh, you know, right out the gate. And, and they were well-funded, you know, then they got bought out by, by uh, Legendary and they started laying people off. Uh, recently, you look at Nerdist. I mean, well, look at the situation with, with Kevin Smith, um, with He-Man and look at the number of views that they got on their Nerdist, you know, podcast or whatever, where he spilled the beans on Orco. They're not getting a lot of hits. In fact, you know, independent YouTubers like us and like Grace Randolph and, and some others, get more views on average than Nerdist, which supposedly has like 2.7 million subscribers. So people are tuning out the Hollywood owned media. And it's weird. Like if they don't directly own the media, Hollywood, New York, then they, they heavily influence the media and geeky. Who's not in this video, unfortunately has a list where she's been keeping track of, of which studios, which publishers own, which news organizations, because these blogs, a lot of them, are playthings. They're just playthings. They're they're part of the marketing budget. You know, Nerdist is a mouthpiece for Hollywood. Geek and Sundry is a mouthpiece for Hollywood. And they, they cut brand deals and all this shit. I mean, YouTubers do too, but there's a big difference between, hey, I'm going to take a couple hundred bucks to pimp a, a razor blade on YouTube versus I'm going to take a couple hundred thousand bucks to say only nice things about Disney movies. You know, uh, I mean, it's huge, huge difference. So I think we need more independent voices all over the world. I, I used to say all over the country. I think all over the world, we need nerds to uh, basically take our space back. You know, I'm not saying Hollywood can't have a voice, but Hollywood should not be the only voice that gets heard. And uh, I do expect if this happens, that I think Nerdist and Geek and Sundry will get either sold off separately, since they're already laying people off, or just 
they'll get gone. They'll shut them down. And we saw that like Sci-Fi Wire, they shut down the girls, geek girls blog or whatever it was called, girl power blog, because it wasn't bringing the views. It wasn't paying for itself. People are tuning out. Uh, they're tuning in the YouTubers and it's making these people really, really salty. Uh, Hollywood nerds are very salty that they're not being listened to like they think they should be because damn it, they're geek royalty, right? They're the alpha geeks. They're geek royalty. You have to listen to them. You have to listen to them or you're a fake geek. Uh, when in fact, we're finding out they are the fake geeks. Going to wrap this one up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later.